decorating of the church. Also, don't forget to order your Christmas poinsettias in honor of, of the in memory of those you love, the loved ones that has gone on to be with the Lord. That we need to know that know who they are by December the fourth. Is that correct, Jan? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Also, uh, we're glad that you're here today, and we hope you enjoyed the service. Those who are watching us on Facebook, we're glad you join us, and hope the service is a blessing to you. I want to read something this morning. Psalms 100 simply says this. Shout for joy of the Lord, to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Hear that word? Yes, know that the Lord is your God, and he is who made us, and we are his. He, we are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity we have to come to your house to worship you this morning with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Ask you to be with our visiting pastor, our part of the home folks, be with Brother Scott as he brings a message this morning. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that don't know you as their personal Savior, we pray that they'll come to know you before they leave here. Be with all those who are not with us today, sickness or whatever reason. Just ask you, Lord, to be with them in a special way. And God, thank you so much for giving us another Thanksgiving. And we celebrate you this morning and praise your name. And give you the praise and honor and glory. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Now let us worship.
Thank you, Kathy. That was beautiful. Beautiful rendition of it as well as my soul. You folks are so lucky to have a good musician to lead you into worship. And uh, we appreciate you very much, Kathy. Thank you. It's good to be with you today. Uh, this is not my first time to be here. Uh, Pastor Tim asked me to come, and uh, we're so grateful to always come back to this place. There's a spirit of kindness and friendliness and friendship here that we appreciate. And I uh, do thank you for inviting uh, us back. I'd like to offer you a call to worship this morning, and then I would like to read to you my sermon text, uh, which is the scripture. That way you can think about it for a little while before I come back to comment on it. Let us worship our God. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God, a great ruler over heaven and earth. And now let us listen for the word of God from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep in his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a, a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick and in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of the of my members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at, at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray together. O oh God, we are deeply grateful to you for this time of worship and fellowship. These moments together bless our spirits, and we pray that they will bless your great spirit. Lord, we live in a world of plenty, and yet the poor struggle for daily bread. We pray for those who lack the basic necessities of life, and those who willingly share the resources you have given. God, you teach us to offer hospitality to the stranger and to welcome the weary. We pray for all those who have no place to call home. Bless those who offer refuge to the stranger. God, you hear the cry of all those 
those who are in distress. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Comfort them in their need and help those who care for them. God, Jesus was a prisoner of Rome before his crucifixion. And he instructed his disciples to visit those in prison. We pray for those who live behind bars, for those who are guilty of crime, and for those who may be unjustly imprisoned. We also pray for those who work in prisons, that they may respect the humanity of the women and men they guard. Almighty God, confirm our prayer with the dedication of our lives to ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you will, understand, sing some songs of... So it 
makes sense for us to pay attention to it, to listen to it carefully. In this vision, the Son of Man comes in glory, accompanied by the vast angelic hosts, and he sits on this magnificent throne from which he judges the nations. This great judge separates the people, calling out the sheep and placing them at his right, the preferred place of honor. The other people he calls goats, and he places them on the left. The sheep are told that they will inherit the kingdom prepared for them from the foundation of the world, but the goats are dismissed from his presence. Why does Christ do that? Why does he welcome some of the people into the kingdom, while others he banishes? Is, is it because some have read the Bible more than others? Or have gone to church more often than others? Is it because some were baptized and others were not? Is it because some have learned more about Jesus in Sunday school than others? Some who could recite the great creeds of the church from heart and others could not? Is it because some people were just nicer than others? No, that's not what the gospel says before us this morning. I once heard a preacher say that the only question we'll hear from God on Judgment Day is, what have you done with my son? Did you believe him or not? Did you accept him as your personal savior or not? Now, we may indeed hear those questions from God someday, but that's not the question that Jesus asks the sheep and the goats in Matthew's version of the Gospel. The only question Jesus, the judge, asks is this. What did you do with the least of my sisters and brothers? How did you treat them? Did you have compassion? The sheep on the judge's right are told that they are blessed because they fed the people at the bottom of the heap. They gave something to drink to folks who had nothing to quench their thirst. They welcomed strangers into their homes, replaced threadbare garments with new clothes, went to see people when they were sick, visited folk when they were in prison. They did all these things and more. And that's why they're called blessed by God. <clears throat> when they hear all this, the sheep on Jesus' right simply can't believe their woolly little ears. They never gave a thought to whether or not they should help people on the lowest rungs of the society. They just did it. They were trying to earn points with God or buy their way into heaven or show how good they were. They were just living their lives, making their way through a tough world and helping others to do the same. And in the end, when it comes their turn to be judged by Christ, Jesus welcomes them in as though they were his best friends. He swings the door wide open and invites them in. With unexpected joy, they inherit the eternal kingdom, swept into the marriage feast, given places of honor at the heavenly table. Why? It was because they treated the lowly, the down and out, with kindness and compassion. But there are others who do not fare as well at the end judgment. Jesus has some difficult words to say to those who failed to help the ones Jesus called the least 
of my brothers and sisters. It's a difficult scene for the goats. They face a painful future because they had no compassion for others. I have to admit to you that I have sometimes felt like a goat myself. During my pastoral ministry, I have sometimes had to turn people away who sought my help. Time and again, people would come to the church I served, ask for food or fuel or housing. Some, they said, had lost their jobs and were struggling to keep the lights on in their home and food on their table. I listened. I listened to all their stories, and I wanted to help, but often I just could not. The churches I served were all small, with limited benevolence resources. Some months as a church, we struggled just to keep the, the lights on in the sanctuary. And so, I had to turn some people away. And it made me feel like a goat. We have the same problem right here in Whitfield, don't we? People come every day to Hope Ministries, now called Open Door Community, seeking help. The request for help has become ever more increasing, while the resources to meet that help, the funds, have dried up, have it decreased. Only Andy Kegley and his staff, Andy now is close to retirement, if he's not already he's done so, but we've talked in the past, and he and his staff have shared with me their helplessness. They sometimes feel when they have to turn some needy people away. They look into those desperate eyes, and a little part of their soul dies every time they have to say, no, I'm sorry. We can't help you just now. Believe me, folks, that makes a person feel more than a little like a goat. Of course, we know we can't help them all. I know some of them are using the system making their rounds, taking advantage of the kindness of others. We all know that. But what plagued me in the ministry and still does is, what if their need is genuine? What if somebody's child is really going to go to bed hungry tonight because I did not or could not give them food? What if a widow were to actually freeze to death in her trailer tonight because I didn't give her any help on her fuel bill. How are we going to face people like that at the final judgment? I know that you members of Withful Baptist Church feel this dilemma every bit as keenly as I do. Many of you serve our helping agencies like Agape Food Pantry, an open door cafe. And you're going to help, I'm sure, with the soon to open warming shelter. Thank you, Betty. Every month, I'm the treasurer, so I know. Every month, this congregation faithfully gives hundreds of dollars from your benevolence fund to help Jesus' brothers and sisters in need. Our efforts to help others may sometimes seem so inadequate, so puny, and we're tempted sometimes to become tired, jaded, overtaken by what some people have called compassion fatigue. We're just so tired of helping. There are so few sheep to do so much. And what we do never seems quite enough. 
If you're caught in that matrix this morning, I want to remind you of the words of an old gospel song that many of you probably know, and I know Brother Jerry does. It's called, Little is Much When God is in It. Let me share with you the words. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it, for he'll never forsake his own. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown, and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Yes, folks, this is Christ the King Sunday. Churches who observe that day often sing the old hymn, crown him with many crowns. I'm sure you know that too. But what are the many crowns that we will use to coronate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? If you were to ask the Gospel writer Matthew that question, I think he would say that the only crown that will mean anything at the final judgment is the crown of compassion. There's a devotional book that my wife and I used to use with our son as he grew up. And one of the stories in that book was about the Queen of England. Now we would have to say the King of England, the monarch. But in those days it was the Queen. And the Queen has several castles scattered all over the UK. And whenever she's in one of her castles, her flag flies on top of that roof. The devotional thought went on to say that the King of Kings lives in each one of us. If the King is in residence, then his flag should be flown on our rooftop in our lives. That flag, that banner, is the compassion of Christ for the last, the lost, and the least. When Jesus returns to this earth, he will not ask us what awards we have been given. He will not ask us how many influ influential friends we have made. He will ask, did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? Did you visit the lonely? Folks, what will we say as individuals, as a church, as a nation? We can't do it all. We can't help everyone. But we can do something not change the world by doing big things, we can at least be faithful to the king by doing small things. So, maybe this actually has been a Thanksgiving sermon after all. Maybe serving others in their need, flying the flag of compassion. Maybe that's the best way we could ever show our gratitude for all that God has done, is doing in our lives. Amen. I just have a hard time sorting my papers up here. You'll have to forgive me. Hmm. Let us pray together. O oh Lord our God, we confess to you that we sometimes fall short of your standard of life, but ultimately, we thank you for that grace that is so amazing, that accepts us, that teaches us, that lifts us beyond what we could ever do or be. We thank you, God, that as the song said, that Salvation is rich and free. But this morning, God, as we thank you for what glorious blessings you have given to us, 
We think of those today who do not feel that. Children who have been taken from their homes in Gaza. Young people who have been taken from their parents and shoved into Russia in Ukraine. And the many who struggle right here in our own community with how they're going to make ends meet. For the many children whose parents are in jail and who have to depend on the generosity of others for Christmas gifts. Oh God, our world has many challenges. But you are a great God. And you have given us the untold privilege of doing your work right here on this earth. I thank you for this congregation and for its pastor. We pray for him today that you will give him strength to carry on his wonderful work here in Withful. And for the many people here in this congregation whose hearts you have touched with the need to help your brothers and sisters. I thank you, God, for the way you have touched many Christians and many people of faith here in this community in that regard. Oh God, help us never to grow weary and well doing. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, the jury's going to come now and uh, lead us in our invitational hymn as we stand. If you feel that you'd like to today, make another step of faith. Maybe the first one. That's okay. A life of faith begins with the first step. Or perhaps you'd like to rededicate yourself to the good work that God has called us to. This is your time. This is what we call our invitation. And you're welcome to come and express that publicly this morning. Jerry, would you come?
And now, may God who seeks the lost keep you. May God who brings back the wandering heart uphold you. May God who binds up the injured heal you. May God who strengthens the weak empower you. Now, 